Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and today I'm going to show you how to build this two player Minecraft survival house. Before we go through the materials list of the build, I would just quickly like to give you an overview and make sure it's something you and your friend are both looking for. So if this isn't already obvious, this is the same house flipped over onto the other side. It is completely identical inside and out 99% of the time. There are a couple of minute changes, but for the most part they are exactly the same. So we have this center stairway leading up to the main doors where we go through and enter the middle floor where we have all of our our furnaces, crafting table, smithing table, cartography table and loom as well as our stone cutter over here. We also have a balcony out here so you can give your friendly neighbor a wave if you would like to. And then if we just take the stairs up here to the bedroom and storage room where we have some double chests here for main storage, some barrels in the walls for a little bit extra if need be, and then also an ender chest to hide away some of your valuables if you don't trust your friend maybe. <laughs> and then we have a bridge crossing over from one side to the other where as I said it is exactly the same and ditto with the middle floor. And then we go down to the bottom floor here where we have our crop farm and then in the center through these fence gates here we have a shared enchanting setup because these are quite expensive you don't really need one each you can just share this in the middle of the build and then one final thing is we have another entrance way here out through the back so you have a secondary way to get inside the base so here is the materials list for the entirety of the build. This is for both sides of the house. But if you and your friend want to share the resource gathering load, then you can split it in half, get 50% of everything, and it looks something a little bit like this. But just for now, while I go through the materials list, let's stick it back together and begin. So at the top here, we have all of our oak variants that we're going to be using, and then just below it, we have all of these spruce variants. Those are the main two blocks in the build. We then also have some cobblestone, which is probably the third most used block, but we're also going to be mixing in a little bit of andesite just to give it some texture, so maybe grab a little bit of that too. We then have some bricks, and then below it we have the rest of the miscellaneous items. So some iron bars, glass panes, lanterns, chains, campfires, and then these corn flowers simply represent the amount of normal flowers needed. So just grab 11 different variants, not all of the same type of flower. We then have four flower pots, a couple of buckets of water, and then 48 wheat seeds. But of course you could grab carrots, potatoes, or beetroot, whatever you would prefer. And then the rest of the items here are just everything that's going to be helpful in survival, crafting table, furnaces, beds, that sort of thing. To start off with here, we're going to do the middle section of the base and then start work on the houses afterwards. So we're going to begin with our oak stairs and planks and we're going to start with a line of stairs going one, two, three, four and five blocks across. We then need to do that four more times so there is a second row and then two more after that so that you eventually end up with a four block high staircase. And then coming off the back of these blocks, we're gonna go back with our oak planks, one, two, three, and then four more blocks on all five of those rows. So you have the nice little platform here to stand on. And then finally, off the back of these planks, we're gonna have five upside down oak stairs. Underneath our wooden platform here, on the first oak plank on the outside, we're going to have three spruce planks going all the way down to the floor and then same again over here. In this three wide gap in the middle, at the top we can have some upside down spruce stairs and then just below that we can have three glass panes. At the bottom we can have three spruce planks and then just in front of it three grass blocks and go ahead and cover the front up with some trap doors and we're going to have two upside down spruce stairs on the side to make a nice little flower bed which of course is going to need some flowers to go on the grass blocks and then we can have one two spruce fences here on either side and then underneath these two corner blocks the upside down oak stairs we're going to have three spruce fences like that just as some pillars to hold up the platform and then finally we're going to have a line of five spruce fences like that so for now that's going to do it for the middle section we're now going to start work on the actual houses itself and the way this is going to work is i'm going to build one of these on camera and copy it on over afterwards because they are completely the same so you can either do what i'm going to 
do or if you're building it simultaneously with your friend one of you is just going to have to flip everything I do so I'm going to build mine on the right side if you're building on the left just do the opposite basically it should be fairly self-explanatory as we go along here so we're going to grab our oak logs and next to this wooden stair here at the bottom we're going to place one down then leave a gap of five blocks and place down another then a gap of three and place one more and then another gap of three then we can leave another gap of five and place another one and then a final gap of three and place it next to the spruce blocks that we already have placed down so these four blocks here on the outside never mind the two in the middle for now these four can all be brought up by seven more blocks for a total of eight so you should have something like this. Now we can come to the middle two here and bring them up by two more blocks and then plop ourselves on the floor and on this fourth highest block we're going to have a line of horizontal logs going across from one side to the other until we reach back to the first one we place down. Just like that. So you should have an outline looking like this at the moment. Now we're going to get started with the roof. So the first thing to do is to place an upside down oak stair on the top of those oak pillars and then regular ones coming out of the back of it just like so with a full block on top of the upside down stair. And then basically we just want to staircase our way up with a regular stair then an upside down one coming off the back until they eventually meet in the middle like that where on top of those top stairs we can have two oak slabs and then if we just sit ourselves in the middle here crouching over this gap and place in a stair facing outwards like that with a slab on the lower part of the block so it should look like this and you will also be able to place a chain with a lantern underneath we can then grab our oak slabs and on these bottom upside down stairs place a slab next to them then change over to an oak stair upside down of course and then a final stair in the middle and you just want to place in three oak trap doors on top of all of these slabs. You can then copy this round onto the back of the house as well. Once you've got the front and the back of the roof done, we're then going to hop up to the center here and you will probably need to just pillar up and place a tent block in the center, but we're going to go slab, stair, slab, and then stair on both of the two sides and just bring them into the middle where we can have a final slab. Now we're going to do the roof outline for the side that's nearest the middle. So we want to do one, two oak stairs just like that next to the one on the outer block with a slab underneath that middle one, then two two upside down oak stairs, two more slabs and then a final oak stair in the center so it looks like this. And now for the side on the outside of the build, so not the one in the middle, we're going to have an upside down oak stair with a slab off the side of that and then another one on top like so and then we're just going to place in a temporary block on both of those so we can have an upside down oak stair on the back of them. You can replace the temporary block with a slab just like that and then a final slab here in the center. So that right there is the roof outline all done. There's just a couple more details we need to build on the roof before we can go ahead and fill it all in. So we're going to start off in the middle section here and on top of these two outer upside down stairs we're just going to have two strip spruce logs. On top of those we're going to have two spruce stairs facing outwards, then two upside down stairs, trapdoor in the middle, two trapdoors on top with a slab in the center. So we should have this miniature roof right here. We'll connect it all up afterwards as I said. But we're going to come around to the other side now and this is the front of the house, yes, with the staircase. We're going to go into the third block here, this slab just before the upside down stair and we're going to place in a brick block and then go up by two more and then we're going to have a brick stair facing inwards and then an upside down stair a full block and then a campfire on top of here if you're in survival maybe don't stand on it like i just did there otherwise you'll get burnt but we're going to cover it up with spruce trap doors and there we have a chimney so as for filling in the side with our chimney here, we want to start off with our spruce planks and on this bottom row where we have the oak planks, we're just going to bring them all the way across from one side to the other. But we're not actually going to have these three in the center because you can see them on this wall. So we only want to have three this side and two that side. Just on top of that, we're going to have a line of spruce stairs going across from one side to the other and same again on the next row just above it. You might have to just stand on the chimney here to get that block placed down but there we go we got our full blocks we got our stairs and the final layer here is going to be spruce trap doors going all the way across like so 
And the other side here, round the middle, is virtually the same thing. So on the bottom row, we need to have two spruce blocks like that. And then on the next one, we're going to have three stairs and they should curve round and connect to the bit we already have built here. It's just like that on the other side too. And then on the next row, we're going to have another line of stairs going all the way across until we reach the oak stairs over here. And in this three block gap, we're going to have three spruce slabs just to finally connect that miniature bit we did at the start. And then finally, as you may have guessed, we're going to have some more spruce trap doors at the top. Next up, round the front of the build here, on these two oak logs, we're going to have two more oak logs coming out just like that. So three blocks up from the ground, we're going to have a spruce button on the front of both of them. And then directly below, we're going to have a cobblestone wall with two spruce fences above, just as some support pillars to hold up the balcony that we're going to build here. So to do that, we need a spruce stair, a slab, a stair, another slab, and then another stair, and then a line of slabs going across like that. We can then build up the top here by placing in a line of oak fence going all the way around and then on these corners here just as a little bit of added detail have two flower pots but leave them empty they're not really meant to be flower pots they're just meant to be extra points on our fence. And the final thing we can do is underneath these oak logs here have a couple of open fence gates just to look like some extra added support holding up the balcony. Now we're going to grab all of our cobblestone and do the bottom section of the house here. So we're going to start off underneath the balcony we just built by having a line of walls across the top and the bottom, two either side with one in the middle, leaving these two spots open for some iron bars. Now I should say we're using walls instead of full blocks here just because it provides that little bit of added depth which is really awesome for building. Depth is a very important thing and something as minute as that can look really good. So we're going to do a similar thing around the other side as well. On these 3x3 three three sections, we're just going to make a ring of cobble walls with an iron bar in the middle. And then same again over here. And then as for around the back, we're going to copy what we have at the front. So a line of walls at the top and the bottom, two either side, one in the middle, and then two iron bars here. Now what we're going to do is come around to where we have our flower bed and this is where we actually need to use full blocks because this is our doorway. So three full blocks on either side, upside down cobblestone stair at the top and then this is where we can have our spruce door. Then if we just walk through here and come to this little section, we're going to grab our walls once again, have three on that side and then three more with one at the top and then finally two spruce fence gates just to connect all of that nice and smoothly. Now what I'm doing here is adding in some andesite into our cobblestone just to make a little bit of a mix and to add texture to the build, making it look slightly weathered. Now if you don't want to add in andesite, maybe you could do this with stone bricks or any other stone wall. It's entirely up to you, it just makes the build look a little bit better I think. Now we have the bottom section of the house all done, we're going to come around to the front once again on this balcony and we're going to grab some strips oak logs and on these outer blocks here next to the pillars we're going to have one, two, three and four of those bringing them all the way up to the slab and then we're going to come down here and have two spruce trap doors flicked upright so they're flat against the logs we've just placed down and above them we can have some spruce stairs with another trap door in the middle so it should be looking like this this. We can then grab our stripped oak logs again and then just have one, two and three more like so. Just make sure you're crouching when you place it on the trap door there. But then we can switch over to our barrels and once again crouching as we do this. I am crouching believe it or not, I'm just flying in creative so you can't see. But we're going to have a line of horizontal barrels going all the way across. Just make sure they're all actually facing sideways like that. But then on top of it, we're going to switch over to our strip spruce wood and have one here, two here, same again on that side with a horizontal one in the middle and there we can have a glass pane. And if we just head out here, the front looks like this. And what you can actually do now is copy this top section, so never mind all of this stuff, but the barrels and the strip spruce wood and the glass pane round to this side too real quick. So once you have this copied round onto the back, we can then grab our strip spruce log and next to the oak log here, we're going to have one, two, three and four coming up to the top pillar here. Same again on the other side and then also do the same for the middle. 
Just behind these upside down oak stairs, we can have a full spruce plank. And then if we just pop outside here and underneath them, we can have some spruce stairs and some more on the bottom. Two glass panes here and here, and then some spruce trap doors as some shutters for those windows. Now moving around to the outer side here, in these two corner spots we're going to have some spruce stairs with an oak trap door on top of them as a window. And then we're going to have an upside down spruce stair with a full block on top on both of the two sides. We can then grab our oak logs and have four of them pillared up just beside what we've just built. So we have something like this. And then we're going to grab our spruce planks and have three along the bottom, three across the top and then three down on either side. We can then put a spruce stair in the center here and then two glass panes to make a window. We can then build a flower bed just in front of these spruce planks. So we're going to have three grass blocks, oak stair, oak stair, oak slab, and then just cover these three sides up with some spruce trap doors, making sure you actually cover up the grass like so. And of course, get some flowers to go inside of the flower bed here. The middle side here is the final one left to do, so we need to start off by lining ourselves up with the center and grabbing three oak logs and placing them down just like that. We can then grab a spruce stair and place it in the middle of this section here on the side where our staircase is and then line the rest of it up with spruce planks just all the way around with a glass pane in the center. As for this side over here, very similar thing, starting off with an oak door in the middle and then just line the two sides with some spruce planks and then just step inside here and place in an upside down spruce stair. The very final thing to do is grab a lantern and place it next to this oak log here, just above the fence. And as for this oak log here, we're going to have a chain first and then a lantern. So that, everybody, is the exterior of one side done. You can now either copy it on over or just wait until I do that super quickly and then we'll be ready to start work on the inside. Now that we've got both houses all done, we are ready to head inside and start work there. So once again, I'm going to be heading into the right side house. Now we're going to start off down the bottom here and place ourselves against the wall with the door and the fences. And in these top two corners here, we're going to have an oak slab on the top part of that block. And then the one that has this archway, we're going to grab our oak stair and place it upside down just like that. And then basically, we're just going to turn this into a staircase. So having upside down ones and then regular going all the way down to the bottom until you get something that looks like that. And then what you can also do real quick is just break this dirt block and replace it with a stair. That will make sense later on. But now what we're going to do is grab our oak slabs and basically just fill the rest of this ceiling and floor in with those going all the way across but leaving these three blocks open to actually access this upper area here. So just go ahead and fill all of that in. So the floor looks like this and the ceiling looks like this. And now what we can do is just center ourselves in the middle of the room here. So in between these two oak logs and these two walls right here look up and place another slab to turn that into a full block and then place a lantern hanging down from below and then finally just get rid of those oak slabs around it and replace it with some oak stairs upside down then you can come on up to the middle floor here and grab your oak stairs and starting off with the stripped oak log wall here we're just going to have some upside down ones on the edge of all of the blocks here going all the way around making sure all of them are upside down but we're not going to place one in the corner here. What we're now going to do is keep our stairs in hand and place one facing into the trapdoor like so with an upside down one on the side and then basically we're just going to make another staircase going all the way up until we reach this point right here. So the final upside down stair will be next to that spruce block just before the bricks and then basically we just want to once again fill the rest in with oak slabs but making sure you leave enough room so you can actually access the next floor. As you can see, making sure you leave those three blocks open, you can do that nicely. 
The first thing we're going to do on the top level here is grab our oak stairs and just place one on top of this oak log here with one either side of it. We can then grab four spruce planks and place two here with another two on the other side and then switch over to our spruce stairs and just have another upside down one next to the ones already placed down and then we can also have another spruce trap door here making sure it's facing the same way and not something like that. Make sure it's the same direction. And then we can switch over to our spruce slabs, which we're going to place just below the spruce trap doors here on both of the two sides. And then finally, to line the middle here, we're going to grab some more spruce trap doors just to smoothen out the ceiling. We're now going to head down the staircases we've just built to the bottom level and do some work on this room where our crop farm is going to go. So what we need to do is make a walkway around our crop farm. So we're going to get rid of this block here in front of the staircase, bring it over to the wall and then go along past the door and to the fence gates and just replace all of them with some oak planks. And now we can grab our water bucket here and place in what's going to hydrate all of this land, which is why we have this stair here in the ground. So you can go ahead and waterlog that and then till all of this soil with your hoe and as you can see it's hydrating all of the land very nicely. It's far enough that it reaches those four blocks, that water source. Now before you place in your seeds what you may want to do is do something about that dirt block and also that one right there. If you're anything like me you will want to replace that ASAP because you don't really want to see dirt there even if it is just one pixel so go ahead and get rid of them and replace them with the oak plank and the oak log but if you're not really bothered just leave it. <laughs> it's not really that big a deal because once we have our seeds in place it's going to cover it up for the most part and you barely will ever notice it. As for the middle floor here, we're going to start off with a crafting bench to the left of our doorway, followed by a smoker, blast furnace, and then two regular furnaces. Over to the right of the doorway in the corner here, we can have a smithing table, then our cartography table, and then a loom. And then the final thing to add in here is our stone cutter, which is going to be going in the corner. But to me, it doesn't make much sense having this super sharp rotating razor blade right at the top of the staircase here. I know it can't actually damage you, but if it could, that would be pretty painful. So we're just going to cordon it off here with three iron bars. That way, if you could get damaged on it, you're not going to accidentally step on it whilst you're going up your staircase. Just a couple more finishing touches for this floor here. We're going to have a lantern on top of this corner furnace and we're going to have a flower pot on top of our smithing table here. Now the only other thing that you may potentially want to add into this floor is a brewing stand. If you use potions quite a lot you may want to place this down so maybe just put it on top of your blast furnace or your crafting bench or wherever you want it really. Heading on up to the top floor now, the first thing we're going to do is build a fireplace. So place in a campfire just in front of that bottom brick block and it's not going to spread flames to the wood here. Do not worry, it's not going to burn the house down. So just to the left and the right of it, we'll have a brick stair with three upside down stairs just above it. And then we can cover the front up here with three spruce trap doors and one more on the corner to complete our fireplace, which is going to keep you nice and toasty in your bed just beside it. We can then place in a couple of double chests here and two more over here and then turn around to this corner and place in a spruce trap door in line with the barrel here so on the top of this block not up there because on top of it we want to place in our ender chest and then a lantern just to the side with a painting to the side of the lantern. So for the most part, that is all three floors done. We are now ready to copy it on over, unless your friend has already done that for you. Then just bear with me for a couple of seconds whilst I do all of that, and then we can do the final finishing touches. There we go, I've copied it on over to the other side here and made a couple of minute changes such as flowers in the flower pot, also the type of painting and then lastly the bed colour just in case you want a few tiny changes and not all completely the same. But now we can start work on our bridge going across from one side to the other. So we're going to have a campfire on top of this middle block here on both of the two sides and then three more in the centre. Then you can just get your shovel and extinguish all of those and then quickly hop down to the bottom here and just place in three spruce trap doors like that to complete your bridge going from one side to the other. The final thing to do is the enchanting setup in this small room here underneath the staircase and the first thing we're going to do 
Just above the fences here is placed down an upside down spruce stair here and here as well as two more below it and then below once again just like that. And then on this top row we're going to have a line of slabs and then as well on the row below it but not the final row here otherwise it actually blocks the bookshelves. Instead what we need to do is just break this block and place in a lantern hanging down to provide some light. I know it's a little bit cramped in here but do bear with me. So we're going to get rid of these blocks in the middle just to make a nice little area where the enchanting will take place and then we're going to get rid of all 16 blocks around it on all four sides as well as the corners and then just go ahead and fill all of these in. You can also miss one corner if you want because all you need is 15 bookshelves for max level but I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I'm going to fill that in and then of course in the center here we can have our enchanting table and to the right and the left our grindstone and anvil. Now the very final thing to do is if you want to have a little bit of added storage down here by your enchanting we can break all of these down by three blocks and place in some upside down barrels so that they're facing the underground here as you can see and come to think about it probably should have placed in the enchanting table afterwards but go ahead and fill this in otherwise you're going to get lots of mobs spawning down here which won't be good you won't be able to get them to shut up <laughs> and as you can see here we have the upside down texture of the barrel which is just glorious I use this all of the time and you can still as you can see access the barrel to store all of your items inside. So there we go everybody, that is the two player house tutorial all done. I really hope you did enjoy watching and I hope you and your friend like living in this house side by side right next to each other. Fingers crossed you don't get on each other's nerves too much. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine and I hope you enjoy playing in your Minecraft world together. But thank you everybody so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.